What's going on you guys? My name is Josh, also known as Harry Tornado, and in today's video, I'm gonna go over my top 10 favorite ways to find new inventory to sell for a profit on eBay. This list is gonna be in no particular order for me, but it really depends on what's available in your area. For me personally, I really like going to the Goodwill Bins, also known as the Goodwill Clearance Center or Goodwill Outlet. A quick Google search of any of those terms should show you the one closest to your area. They're certainly not all over the United States, but most big cities will have a location like this. My Goodwill Outlet location charges $1.89 per pound for clothing and shoe items and then smaller prices per pound for other hard good types items. As you can see here, there is just a huge variety of items in this store, both hard goods and clothing. Generally, it's about 50-50 depending on the day, but I was able to scoop up this DVD VHS combo unit. I'm testing it here, plugging it into the wall. It turned on and the little door to the DVD player opened up, so I will need to fully test it with a, with a tape and a DVD, but I looked up the model number on on eBay and it looks like this is selling for anywhere from like 50 to $100 plus shipping depending on how many accessories it has. I'm walking out of Goodwill Bins today. I paid $3 for this DVD combo unit. And as you guys saw on the eBay screen, it should sell between $60 and $80 plus shipping, I think. It does turn on and work. I gotta put a VHS tape in there to make sure it works. But this is the type of item you can find at the Goodwill Bins. Three bucks for a VCR combo unit. It's not a lot of risk at a place like this. And you know, if you buy something for two or three dollars and it doesn't work, you know, whatever, you're out three bucks. You don't have to go spend $50 on something to try to make 50. You can spend three to try to make 50 in profit after fees and shipping. And that is why I love the Goodwill Bins. And again, they don't just have electronics, they have clothing. Every location is different in terms of what they have and the prices that things are. Uh, but pretty much every location has lots of opportunity if you're willing to, to get in there and, and dig and fight the crowds. And then of course, my second favorite place to find items to sell on eBay is just the regular old to plain Goodwill. All Goodwills in my area of South Carolina have set prices on all of their items, like men's shirts are $4.75 each, no matter what they are. All shoes are $6.50 each, no matter what they are. Hard goods are kind of priced all over the place. Most things are like either $2.92 or $4.92, really kind of all over the place, depending on who's pricing things that day. But generally things are really really affordable in my Goodwills. Occasionally you'll see something that somebody overprices and puts in a glass case up front. But for instance, this pot I think was like $3.92. It was a little big, so I didn't grab it. But this pair of shoes I'm finding right here, this pair of Nike Jason Kids was just $6.50. Check out eBay sold comps on this pair. I do want to say that you're not always going to be able to walk into a Goodwill and find a pair of used tennis shoes for $6.50 that can sell on eBay for almost $120 plus shipping. These are, uh, there, there's a couple issues with these. They're appealing like a little bit too. So I might be able to get like 75 to 80 for them, but still 650 into 80 bucks plus shipping is a great deal. And another reason why I love sourcing items for eBay at Goodwill. Number three on the best places to find items to sell on eBay are Amazon overstock stores. This store is called Dream Deals, but it's only local to me in South Carolina. There are two locations, one in Columbia, South Carolina, and one in Spartanburg, South Carolina, but Amazon overstock stores are popping up on pretty much every corner all around the Southeast, Midwest, things like that. I know we have three in Columbia, Crazy Cas Boys, like Palmetto overstock, I think, and then Dream Deals. Uh, so I know there's some in Tennessee, some in Kentucky, some in Texas, I think, a couple in Florida, and they all have different names, so it's kind of hard to find one near you, but maybe a quick Google search or Facebook Marketplace search for Amazon Overstock Store or Amazon Bins will turn up some results for you. This store gets pallets shipped in every Friday, uh, Thursday and Friday, and then the prices drop. So like on Friday and Saturday, it's $6 per item, no matter what it is. I've been in here and I've found sealed cell phones for $6 a piece. I got two of those, and I sold each one for $250. So you can find stuff like that, but also there's a lot of smaller stuff too so each day the price drops a little bit uh, their prices are over there six dollars friday and saturday four dollars on sunday three on monday two on tuesday one on wednesday and thursday is their clearance special today is thursday so you could go in here with one of those ikea bags like that and fill it up for like i think it's 15 or 20 dollars. i'm not sure but you get as much stuff as you can put in that bag you can get it for 20 bucks uh, so that's another another huge benefit of my geographical location is that we have one of these stores I understand that most of you watching this video are probably not gonna have a store like this near you, and it's it, it's difficult to find. But again, check Google, check Facebook. Uh, they're popping up all over. We've had three of them. The three that we have now have all opened up within the last 
five months. Uh, a lot of people are starting these stores, so chances are, if you don't have one near you right now, you will pretty soon. I didn't see anything worth getting a whole a whole bag. You know, that's the thing about fill a bag day. Like, I might find like five or six items that are worth picking up, but I'm not gonna pay $20 for five or six items when you can get a whole bag, you know? So I haven't really had a lot of luck on fill a bag day, but I have had a lot of luck on the restock days, Friday and Saturday. So again, if you, can find a store in your area like this definitely go to the restock days whatever those days are for that store and check it out because again you can find some super high dollar items for just usually five to seven dollars each i'm so embarrassed i had to come back home after i went to both the goodwills and dream deals filming this video today i realized that i left the house this morning with my bedroom slippers on instead of wearing actual shoes they're also a size too big so they look like huge clown shoes but i'm happy i came home today because i think the fourth best place to find items to sell on ebay again in no particular order is selling stuff you already have inside your home hello mo's how are you? Oh, I'm just gonna rub your belly a little bit. Missed you so much, you're the best. Let's take a look in this little cabinet in our living room. We have a ton of old Wii games and, and DVDs and stuff that we never watch or play anymore. I've got a Wii Guitar Hero guitar down there that could sell for like 30 bucks. We've got an old VCR. I mean, there's so much potential in, in just this one little closet that we hardly ever even go into. We look in this front closet up here. Look at all these jackets. We're a two person household plus one dog. We do not need all these jackets. I will say that most of these jackets belong to my beautiful wife, so I'm not gonna sell them. But if you're in a situation where you wanna start selling online, you can go through your closet and just sell clothing. The first three things that I sold on eBay when I first started were all clothing items that I pulled out of my own closet. So again, all the potential in this closet, all these shoes, Look at all these freaking shoes. We don't need, we got four feet here. I need to take these dumb shoes off. Those are hideous. We don't need them. Bye, Moe's. Love you so much. Clean up a little bit. The fifth option, which may or may not be available to you depending on where you live, is taking advantage of your neighborhood Facebook group. I live in a nice little neighborhood. Everybody's pretty friendly, and we have a little Facebook group where people can go and ask questions or offer things for sale. So I've posted several times that I sell things on eBay full time, and if anybody ever has anything that they're thinking about donating to Goodwill or having a yard sale with, to please let me know, and I'd be happy to pay them as much money as I possibly can while still ensuring a profit for myself. And I have bought several things for my neighbors i bought an, a nintendo 64 a couple months ago for 50 bucks that i sold for 90 like last week uh this one lady sold me a whole tub of dvds for 20 bucks and in the tub was a like the whole series of remington steel the tv show and that set of dvds sold for like 89 dollars free shipping on ebay so taking advantage of a neighborhood like this especially if you have a facebook group i guess if you don't have a facebook group you could make one or you could just go you know, meet your neighbors and knock on their doors and introduce yourself and tell them what you do. Uh, but I have had some success going that route. So again, if you don't live in a neighborhood, you don't have this option. But for me, this is a, has been a pretty fruitful option in the, in the past. The sixth option, which is pretty similar to number five, is just to tell your friends, family, and coworkers what you do. You don't have to do it on a Facebook group. You can tell them in person or you can send out a text message every once in a while to just remind people that, hey, I'm starting an online business selling things online. If you have any used items that you would like to get rid of and you don't have enough to have your own garage sale or you don't wanna drive to the thrift store, I'll come pick up stuff from your house, get it out of your hair and pay you a, a fair price for it. To, to again ensure that you're getting the most money that you can while still ensuring a profit for myself. Uh, I have talked to my boss, my old boss in the past. He's sold me some video games at a pretty fair rate that I was able to double my money on recently. Um, people are always sending me Facebook messages and texting me like, hey, I found this old thing in my dad's old house. Would you be interested in it? And sometimes it's junk, but sometimes it's really good stuff. And honestly, I'm just excited that people consider selling their items to me before they do anything else with it because that's what I want. I want people to think of me first when they have something they want to get rid of because if you've got an old Nintendo Wii sitting around that you are thinking about taking a Goodwill and then you're like, oh, Josh sells on eBay. I wonder if he wants this Nintendo Wii. The answer is always going to be yes as long as the price is right. So tell your friends, family, and coworkers what you do and I'm sure that can be a pretty good source of eBay inventory for you. The seventh best way you can find things to sell on eBay is by dumpster diving. And I know this isn't gonna be for everybody. You know, some people think it's too gross, but some people find some very profitable items digging through dumpsters. Uh, this guy on Instagram I follow, I don't remember his name offhand, but I'll put a link to his Instagram here. He's found a really good dumpster lately and he actually 
actually found a prosthetic leg recently in a dumpster for free and sold it on eBay for over $500. So 500 bucks, I'm willing to dig in a dumpster, that's for sure. Also, if you wanna sell on eBay and you don't wanna dumpster dive for items to sell, you can always dumpster dive for boxes. Like on top here, there are a lot of clean boxes that would are awesome. I actually have an item to ship out today. I'm going to dig in here a little bit and see if I can find a box to fit because shipping supplies is definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, I do get a lot of my like priority mail boxes for free from USPS, but occasionally if I need a big box, I have to go to Lowe's or something to buy it for like a dollar fifty. So if you can stop by a dumpster and get, you know, five to ten really nice clean boxes to ship stuff in, nothing wrong with that. Dollar saved is a is a dollar earned, right? That's what they say. I'm just gonna grab this one box today. It's pretty clean. It's got some powder or something in there, but I sold a drum on eBay yesterday, so I need a big box like this to ship it out. So I just saved a dollar fifty. I don't see anything in this dumpster day that would be worth grabbing to sell on eBay, but again, never hurts to look. I can extend the seventh method even further by including looking for items on the side of the road. A lot of times people will just put out big heavy items next to their garbage cans, hoping that the garbage people pick them up. And as far as I'm concerned, that's that's free game. I'm doing a starting from zero challenge on my YouTube channel. And one of the first items that I found for free on the side of the road was a golf bag. I got it, took it home, cleaned it up and sold it on Facebook for 30 bucks. Obviously you can't beat that buy cost getting something for zero dollars. So any amount you can sell it for is straight profit. I also found some silicone Christmas tree molds to make like cookies or soap or cakes or something. Got those in a box on the side of the road for free and they sold for like seven dollars on facebook marketplace plus shipping uh so you can find some really really good stuff or you can just find some decent stuff but it definitely never hurts to keep your eye out for things sitting beside the road for free the eighth way you can find stuff to sell on ebay is by going to yard sales garage sales and estate sales i will say that this depends pretty heavily on your geographic location some areas are just better for yard sales than others if you live up north where it's really cold or snowy a lot of the a lot of the months you're going to have a pretty short season where garage sales are plenty Full, but if you live down south in like Florida or Georgia, you could have yard sales year round. We do have a pretty good yard sale season here in South Carolina. I'd say from like the end of February up until through summer, like maybe July or August. But personally, I just prefer going to thrift stores. Yard sales are kind of far drives for me sometimes. Like I don't want to take the chance to drive 30 minutes out to one garage sale and then I get there and there's nothing but used baby clothes and junk, you know. Uh, so I, I prefer the thrift store method, but guys like Cincinnati Picker and Garage Flips, they love garage sales and they make tons of money buying stuff from garage sales and selling it on eBay. The ninth way to find items to sell on eBay would be by doing retail or online arbitrage. And this just means that you would go to a retail store either in person or to their online website and you would find items to buy from them that you could flip for a profit on eBay or Amazon or any other marketplace. And obviously this gets kind of difficult because you would really have to focus on things that are on clearance or on a really crazy sale or things that are discontinued to make any significant type of income. I have had some success in the past with going to stores like Ollie's Bargain Outlet or um, Big Lots, Dollar Tree, things like that. You, you can make a little bit of money there if you know what you're doing, but um, retail and online arbitrage probably takes the most skill out of any method of sourcing I've talked about in this video so far. You've got to take time to do your research, like search sales, download all these apps to check inventory, check the Amazon sales rank on things. It's, it's a lot that goes into it, but it could work for you. If you live out in the middle of nowhere and you've got some little country store on the corner of nowhere street in the middle of nowhereville, you might can go in there and find some discontinued shampoo for $3.99 and sell it on eBay for 50 bucks. You know, uh, one of my favorite Instagram accounts to follow is called Thrift to Travel, I think. Her name's Jen, and she does that. She goes to all these like dusty Ace hardware stores and old, you know, country stores and, and looks, scans the shelves for things that are discontinued that she can buy for a couple bucks in the store and then sell on Amazon or eBay for 50, 75, 100 bucks or so. And then number 10, the final method of sourcing items to sell on eBay would be buying wholesale. Now you can buy wholesale stuff from websites like Wholesale Ninjas or Bulk.com, but you could also buy wholesale directly from other resellers. I've sold wholesale shoe boxes before. I've sold wholesale like mystery boxes where I just put a bunch of stuff in a box and send it to somebody. And usually people are making between 40 and 60% ROI on that, which for a wholesale buy is actually really good. I also know that Ryan over at Rally Roots YouTube channel sells wholesale vintage t-shirt lots. I'm not 100% sure on the ROI on those, but you could probably spend like a thousand dollars on a bunch of t-shirts and once they all sell probably make like three to five hundred dollars I'm assuming that's generally what they like to shoot for on the ROI for those lots so don't 
count out wholesale. Wholesale does have a lower ROI typically, especially with like the online sites like Wholesale Ninjas in bulk. Uh, but if you live in an area where your thrift prices suck and you don't have any garage sales because it's cold and rainy or whatever, you can maybe look at wholesale as a viable option for getting new inventory to sell on eBay. Today's video is actually a collaboration with a few other smaller YouTube channels and we wanted to see what $20 could buy us in terms of items to sell on eBay in our parts of the country. So I wanted to give you guys kind of a top 10 list for me personally in South Carolina. Of course, I prefer the thrift store and the Goodwill bins because the ROI is really good there and I consistently find really good items. But again, if you live in an area where Goodwills aren't that good. Maybe you can do yard sales. If you don't have yard sales, maybe you can dumpster dive. If that's illegal where you are, maybe you can do wholesale buying from Rally Roots or me or another reseller or an online site. There are hundreds of ways to source. I only talked about 10 in this video, but I'm sure I left out some other stuff. We can go to other thrift stores, not Goodwills, like Salvation Army, Little Mom and Pop thrift stores. There are so, so many, so many ways to, to find items to sell on eBay if you just get a little bit creative. I know that I have a huge advantage when it comes to my geographical location. We have a low cost of goods, a low cost of living here in South Carolina. Thrift store prices are really good. We've got Amazon stores. I'm just very blessed, but I realize that a lot of you watching this video right now probably don't have as many options as I do. So I wanted to make this video to share those with you and, and talk about what's available for me and maybe give you some ideas to help you out in your business if you uh, find your sources lacking. Be sure to check out the other three YouTubers that participated in today's challenge. I'll link their channels in the description below, but the channels were Rachel Strickland, Will World Thrift, and Boris and Natasha Whelan and Dylan. I appreciate them joining me in this challenge and I'm excited to watch their videos to see what $20 could buy them in their part of the country. Thank you guys so much for watching this video today. I definitely appreciate your time. If you enjoyed it at all, take a few seconds and hit that like button down below. It's totally free and really helps me and the channel out a ton. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below as well. Thank you so much for watching. You're the best and I'll catch you on the next one.